things have always lurked beneath the water's surface. We have had to keep caution any time we gathered water from lakes, rivers, and streams. However, most of the major predators that lie in wait below the water are well known. Large predatory fish, crocodilians, sharks, or snakes. Tales have been told of many other frightful beasts that slink and slosh through the waters we live near, but there is evidence out there that a large predatory marine mammal may actually be responsible for some of these tales. Hey, while I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. Leopard Seals Hydruga Leptonix are some of the most menacing ocean predators alive today. The sperm whale is the biggest, but it also has no teeth in its upper jaw and eats mostly squishy things from the darkest depths of the ocean. The orca is pretty intimidating, but there are very few instances of them actually actively attacking humans in a predatory manner. Leopard seals can get up to 11.5 feet 3.5 meters long and up to 1,320 pounds 600 kilograms and are deadly efficient hunters of penguins and other seals, though I will spackle a sheen of realism to these animals with the fact that they mostly eat much smaller animals, like the usual fish prey of most seals, but also squid and krill that they sift from the water with their bizarrely eldritch multi-cusped molars. Those molars are seriously crazy, but they don't hold a candle to its close relative, the crab-eater seal. I mean, just look at those things. What the hell kind of bite wound would that even leave? Leopard seals require blocks and sheets of ice to rest on in order to ambush many of their prey items. This behavioral quirk, plus all of the other physical adaptations, force them to live in cold places, a range that is currently mostly restricted to the land of Antarctica and all the little bits of ocean surrounding it. However, this is not always the case, nor has it always been the case in the history of this super cool but uncanny predator. Every so often, leopard seals get lost for all sorts of reasons. These vagabonds have found themselves on coastlines that reach down towards the southern continent, like Australia, New Zealand, South America, and South Africa. These outliers are outside of the species' currently natural range and either find their way back where they came from, try to cope with their new environs, or die. If we turned back the clock, we'd see the world get colder and colder as we approach the last glacial maximum, the Ice Age. This period of time, 115,000 to 11,700 years ago, saw a drop in global temperatures, formation of the Arctic ice cap, advancement of the world's glaciers, mostly northern hemisphere glaciers, and a drop in sea level. With all that change, the ancient range of leopard seals must have been much broader than it is today, right? If vagrant leopard seals are already spotted in places as northerly as the southern tips of the other continents, then they must have frequented them more during the Ice Age, right? The fossil and archaeological record helps to prove this. Unfortunately, the actual fossil evidence for leopard seals outside of their natural range is quite scant. Richard Klein of Stanford published a monographical paper in the World Archaeology Journal in 1974 about the environment and subsistence of prehistoric man in the southern Cape province of South Africa. In this paper, he lists the leopard seal with an occurrence in historic times. So this probably means a sighting from before the 1900s? This is something noted in a 2011 paper by Graham Avery and Richard Klein in the Transactions of the Royal Society of South Africa, in which they very briefly touch on the seal harvesting trade during the 17th century. 
In the 2011 paper, the authors note that Klein wrote of a possible occurrence of leopard seal remains in late Pleistocene and early Holocene deposits in that 1974 paper, but I couldn't find any mention of these fossils in the paper. I did find mention of other seal remains from mostly Holocene age sites, so maybe some of those remains were too indistinct to confidently refer to the leopard seal species at the time. The 2011 paper notes the known leopard seal fossils come from the western, southwestern, and southern Cape coasts of South Africa. Then, Sandy Oster, Jerome Raynard, Haley Cothra, Irene Esteban, Justin Pargeter and Eric Fisher published a paper in 2022 in the South African Journal of Science in which they survey the fossil critters found in the late Pleistocene and Holocene-aged Waterfall Bluff Rock Shelter located in Bundoland, South Africa. These rock shelters prove humans locked in and got their money up, not their funny up, for a hell of a long time in this area, from around 39,000 to 8,000 years ago. This site is so special to archaeology nerds because it was always near the shoreline in and out of the glacial times, therefore making it one of the few information-packed coastal archaeological sites from the Ice Age in South Africa. I bring this paper up because, among the remains of various coastal critters the locals were turning into struggle meals, was a single tooth that the researchers could confidently identify as leopard seal. These researchers state that this is the first fossil occurrence of leopard seals in this area and time, so perhaps the references in older papers really weren't talking about fossil occurrences. That part is a little confusing but entirely irrelevant. The presence of the leopard seal tooth in the Ice Age shelter tells you that these people found or killed the animal and brought it back to their shelter for supper. Sure, this one instance of a fossil leopard seal tooth could reflect a similarly rare occurrence of the animal during the Ice Age as it occurs today. Maybe they have always been naturally restricted to Antarctica. However, there is also just as much information here to back up the hypothesis that perhaps they were far more widespread during the Ice Age. After all, coastal Ice Age human settlement sites are rare, so perhaps leopard seals were more commonly on the menu for more people than the fossil and archaeological record can currently show us. Obviously, this is mostly speculation because there is no data one way or another. However, it is true that the ice sheets were larger at the time and the global temperatures were lower. South Africa was, on average, 5 to 6 degrees Celsius cooler than today. There may not have been much in the way of ice coverage like you would see in higher and cooler places, but there seemed to be some glaciation in the highest parts of the Drakensberg Mountains. This could point to a lack of sea ice along the coasts here during the Ice Age, which would make it hard for Ice Age leopard seals to establish themselves. However, perhaps their vagrant status here would have been less infrequent. To that end, paleoartist Hodari Nandu has proposed a highly speculative though still plausible scene. Most seals are saltwater animals. They don't do great in freshwater. However, some seals are known to temporarily enter freshwater in search of food, such as harbor seals. Though this has never been reported for leopard seals, it is still quite plausible that some might go hunting for terrestrial prey in rivers that led out into the ocean especially if they were desperate enough. So, Hodari has concocted a scenario in which a small group of the marine mammals have taken advantage of the goodwill of an adult quagga to take down a prey item larger than they usually go for. Knowing how aggressive leopard seals can be with their prey, and knowing they can kill animals only a bit smaller than themselves, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility for this scene to have occurred at least once over the last 30,000 years. The now extinct zebra subspecies known as the quagga was a good bit smaller than the other zebra species, and therefore smaller than most horses, making it an easier target for determined leopard seals. Hodari always comes up with some of the craziest scenarios. Most people don't think of them, even if technically possible. It made me think of the many folklore stories and eyewitness accounts of large amphibious carnivorous mammals attacking and killing people all over the world. 
Most of the time, cryptozoologists think these animals are large otters or surviving members of extinct giant otter species. But maybe freak occurrences of seals can better explain them. Who knows? Anyways, make sure you stay vigilant anytime you are near a body of water, especially if it connects to the sea. You never know what may be lurking in there. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.